put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Spider-Man. Peter Parker is your average nerdy high school student. One day he is bitten by a genetically altered spider. Why not a radioactive spider? Because this isn't the 60s anymore. After a few bumbling failures, because director Sam Raimi thinks nothing is funnier than extreme physical pain, he gets the hang of his new powers and becomes your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Saving people and, you know, fighting off criminals. Then there is a pretty decent amount of heroics in this. Something several of the newer superhero flicks actually tends to kind of forget. That's kind of why we pay to see these movies. Unfortunately, the his friend, I think, Harry Osborne's father has gone off the deep end and is using a an exoskeleton suit, something like that, you know, armor, and a flying thingy, glider, I think they call it, to terrorize people. He is getting revenge on everybody who wronged him, and apparently that includes the audience, because Willem Dafoe gives us the hammiest performance since Speed 2. Just think about that for a second. And inevitably the two will clash. I realize that I'm in the minority on this movie. I don't care that much for it. However, anyone who knows me can attest to that I always try my best to be fair in reviews. So, yeah, even with that, I will try to say all the positives up front because I get that a lot of people aren't going to care much for my various complaints of the movie. And yes, there are some really good things about this movie. I will admit that. It's a pretty decent origin story, and it actually fits in, you know, numerous different aspects that, you know, I'm a pretty big fan of the Spider-Man comics, and it fits in several things that, you know, we love from the comics, and does them fairly well, and it does at least try for most of the sort of, you know, iconic traits. Some it does better than others. J.K. Simmons as... Well, J.K. Simmons is J. Jonah Jameson. There's just... yeah. Period. And... The action is pretty good. You know, there's, I'd, I'd say especially around the halfway point, all the action in the last half of the movie is really good. You know, exciting, fun, fast-paced, at times downright intense, you know, considering that it is a PG-13 movie. It's well filmed, edited well, it has a really nice sort of visual flair to it in parts. There's one of my favorite scenes of this 
excuse me, as far as visuals go, would have to be when Peter Parker, this isn't a spoiler, when Peter Parker is trying to figure out the costume. This happens quite early on, I think about half an hour into the movie or so. And they actually explain why he puts on a costume, at least in the first place. That's, it's not too bad. But yeah, it's, it's a really nicely visualized montage that really, you know, that's the kind of thing that you do have to make interesting, and they succeed. The various interpersonal dynamics tend to be pretty good. The complex father-son relationship between Harry and Norman Osborn, Norman, Harry Osborn, Norman being the father, is pretty well dealt with, I felt. It, you know, captures... I mean, basically, Harry's a rich kid who doesn't like being a rich kid. He goes to, you know, the normal high school, so he doesn't want to stand out as, hey, that's the rich kid, you know. And his father really wants to help him along, but also expects the best of him, so there's th that whole... And they do that quite well. You know, I don't even know the the name of the actor who plays Harry, but he does pretty decently. And Willem Dafoe, when he's not cackling, is quite good in this. The sort of family life of Peter Parker with his uncle and aunt, Ben and May, pretty good. I mean, they're very white picket fence, really kind of, you know, ideal, but, I don't know, it doesn't get to be too sugary and, you know, excessive in that regard. Which brings me nicely into the negatives, because this is a film that is excessive in some parts. The ham is really just exhausting, it's, it's just... I think of, of the entire trilogy, this has the most extremely hammy moments, in, in amount at least. The third one definitely has the worst in sort of potency, but this one I'd say has the most of them. <sighs> Several of the characters, in fact, I'd say almost most of them, kind of feel like jerks. Hold on. Film set in New York. Never mind, that's just realism then. I don't like Tobey Maguire as neither Peter Parker nor Spider-Man. I find him far too geeky and irritating. And as Spider-Man, he's really not funny. And I realize this isn't entirely his fault, but he really doesn't joke anywhere near as much as he should. The Spider-Man of the comics barely ever shuts up. And here's the thing, the Spider-Man in the comics, a lot of people find him irritating. Readers and fellow comic book characters alike. I never really hate him, and I feel like when you read a story about him, you kind of don't hate him. You know, at least us fans, I'd say, don't really hate him. We, we maybe get why he's irritating, but, you know, why other people find him irritating. The movie one, the, the Sam Raimi one at least, I'm looking forward to the new one. I'm really hoping it'll do better at that. The movie one, the Sam Raimi trilogy, he's just irritating. I want to punch this guy so bad. The... The suit, or the, the, the suits, is, are, you know... I'll start with the one that I'd say a lot of people will agree with me on, the Green Goblin suit. Especially the mask. It's, it, it's mainly the mask that's a real problem, because I, I get why they made it armor instead of just, I don't know, fabric, I guess, as in the comics. You know, the, the comic book version of Green Goblin, admittedly, looks pretty goofy, you know. But with, you know, one thing that you really get is the very expressive mask. 
and in the film it's this it's it's frozen basically although at times you know it actually allows for a little bit of expression but then that actually makes it slightly worse but yeah anyway they take away his ability to be you know expressive in facial you know yeah facial features fa facial expressions and it really takes a lot away because he is a character which who who is a very expressive through his face the, the mask you know in the comics one more positive I've neglected to say before admittedly this is one of the first real comic book movies you know where it's not just we are adapting from the comic book to the big screen and it has to look completely different sometimes that really makes sense but frankly us comic book readers we want to see a comic book up on screen and this really does do a lot to capture that you know you have the visual aesthetic you have the proper basically the proper suits at least spider-man does have the proper suit you know to an extent it's it's somewhat stylized i'll get into that in a little bit but but yeah you know instead of you know x-men really gave well, Blade and X-Men gave, uh, you know, gave us more chances to see, you know, it re revitalized the superhero movie. After Batman and Robin did everything in its power to kill it, bury it, cremate it, yeah. And frankly, you know, Blade, I don't really have any complaints about the visuals, although I will admit, you know, the Blade in the movies looks completely different from the comics. I can kind of understand why, but anyway, X-Men, yeah, they have really colorful, distinct costumes in the, in the comics, and in the movies, they just wear these bland black leather outfits, you know, and yeah, so along comes Spider-Man and says, you know what? Screw that, bring back the, the proper suit, you know. Now, on the suit, and I know, I, I, I imagine that I'm in the minority on this one, but frankly, his suit looks like... Actually, first, I should just talk about... I, I concede that whether it's, you know, Tobey Maguire in a suit or it's a CGI creation, it looks the same. However, I would say that that's because the suit looks fake when he's wearing it. You, it. It looks like it's CGI even when it's not, you know. And the CGI in this is pretty good, but it's not, it's not flawless, you know. There are things where you can really tell that it's CGI. But yes, the suit to me looks like frosting on a cake. Okay, I, I feel like I want to take a bite out of him. He looks delicious. I, no doubt about that. But, yeah, it just... I, I really don't like the... the stylized thing to it. it it's... Yeah. I'd say that... Obviously, this is a personal taste issue, but I don't find much at all of the comedy in this funny. I find it rather cringe-inducing, in fact. I suppose that pretty well covers it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.